Hello everyone. I was a bit busy this summer doing an internship at CERN, but I did get the opportunity to visit Maker Faire Hanover. So here I have collected clips, photos, and other interesting stuff I saw there. I will voice over the interesting parts and leave links in the description if you want to explore something more in depth. And with that said, it's time to start the cringe travel montage. After arriving in Hanover, I met up with some of my friends and it was time to head to the convention center. The objective on the first day was to obtain Raspberry Pi Pico 2s. Because of the time, they were released just days ago and this was one of the few places you could get one at a time, and we knew they would run out soon. After that was done and our tunnel vision was easing, we started exploring. But this didn't last long, as we spotted an Arrow Electronics booth and instantly thought to ourselves, free samples. And we were correct. After talking to the people there, each one of us got a dev board of some sort. I didn't exactly need more STM32 dev boards after all the shipments of these I received from Triple and I, so instead I got a curious looking Silicon Labs one that apparently does radio, AI, machine learning, DSP and other stuff. Since this is my first time visiting such an event, and also me having a mild interest in 3D printing, I was a bit blown away by the sheer number of 3D printers everywhere. They had big printers, small printers, good printers, dream printers, cute printers, cringe printers, cheap printers, and weird printers. While pondering the printers, at one of the filament vendors, we were offered to try and break some of the 3D prints printed in PCTG. We of course failed, but cut filament samples in return. It printed fine on an Ender 3v2 and looks decent, so I guess they deserve to have their QR code on the screen for a moment. Before heading off to lunch, we talked to someone from the University of Osnabrück, presenting a setup doing diamond quantum thermometry. Now, I am nowhere near an expert in this field, but from my superficial research, it seems to use nitrogen vacancy centers in a diamond to measure temperature with high precision. The vacancies have electron spin states that are sensitive to temperature, and when excited by green lasers, these centers emit red photons through fluorescence. By applying a microwave field and measuring shifts in spin resonance via fluorescence, a temperature can be accurately measured. The setup was built using a custom-looking optics prototyping system based on 3D printed parts and aluminum extrusion. A link to it will be in the description. I couldn't google anything about the specific demo shown, so I will leave you the picture of their info panel and move on. While on our way to the next destination, which was the Valenkino stand, we walked past some overpriced THT components. We went full circle from THT to SMD, now turning SMD back into THT. Right next to these we saw a much more interesting demo. A robot playing against a human in some sort of footballish game. The thing that attracted our attention was the use of ImGUI, which in my opinion is the best GUI for tooling and or debug views like these. After talking to the people who ran the exhibit, we were surprised to learn that despite it being 2024, there was no AI at play. Everything was pure algorithmic decision making, which is confirmed by the brain activity being conveniently displayed with ImGUI. The Valentino stand was visible from quite far away, in part due to how bulky all their equipment was, and also because of the lack of people that I was expecting to be attracted by the old analog beauties on display here. Guess it's just us that like that sort of stuff then. The most flashy part of the stand was the display of all the Nixitube voltmeters. But I have Nixie tubes at home, so the more interesting stuff to me were the insane tectronic scopes. This chunker is a 1 GHz analog oscilloscope that was produced from 1961 until 1974. The 591 oscilloscopes were often used for doing nuclear research, which is why the CRT is blue. The intention was to place a camera in front of the CRT to capture an event, and since film was more sensitive to blue light, that was chosen as the phosphor color in this model. This is why the scope came from the factory with a camera mount. And in order to achieve the sweep speeds necessary, the horizontal deflection ramp signal is generated by a 4CX250F external tetrode that is cooled by a blower fan shown here. Another interesting exhibit was the Neuberger RPM370 tube tester. It can be programmed to accept different tubes. This is done with a sheet of paper that is placed over the switchboard that tells you what contacts to bridge with the included pegs. After programming you follow a specific procedure to actually perform the measurement, which I completely forgot, but I am sure I can include a link to something in the description if you are curious. We also took a quick peek at Giga's Radnet stand, where he was showing off some interesting artifacts like the uranium glass cubes, rods, as well as several different radiation detectors and counters. 
I didn't film too much of it because we were mostly just talking. If you're interested, I will leave a link to his blog in the description. And with that, day one came to a close. And this is a good time to mention that my trip to Hanover was sponsored by PCBWay. They provide PCB, CNC, 3D printing and many other services. I used them several times already and I am working with their boards for an upcoming project right as I'm rendering this video. A link to their services can be found in the description. On day 2 we came a bit later since we went to sleep at like 3am or something. And in some weird twist of events we ended up taking apart some signal generator at the PTB booth. After seeing for the second time already how neatly you can build modules with URAC, I think I am finally ready to invest in some as soon as I get a need for a modular system of a similar kind. The PTB had other artifacts on display, such as the prototype of the silicon sphere to redefine the kilogram, and other things I was too distracted to ask about. Back at the Velen Kino stand, they had some different gear on display, or maybe we just didn't notice it yesterday. The legendary Tektronix 7834 modular CRT storage oscilloscope, Analog storage scopes seem impossible, but people figured it out. Here the secondary emission of electrons from the front screen of the CRT is used to charge a mesh, and then the flood gun, a secondary, very wide electron beam, is used to illuminate the screen. The charged mesh controls how the flood beam interacts with the screen, keeping the waveform illuminated while the rest of the screen stays dimmer. Another quirk of this scope is the modules that can be inserted into it. For example, you can insert a digital readout module and get a voltage readout on your analog scope screen. Quite mind-blowing for something made in the 1970s. There were also some other definitely new scopes on display. Three of them, actually. An anonymous donor dropped off three TAC Type 310A oscilloscopes, and they were giving two of them away because they didn't have the space or time to deal with them. So we ended up agreeing to grab one towards the end of day two. After looking a bit more at Raspberry Pis being abused, and doing an interview with Eben Upton, the CEO of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, link in the description, we went to grab a donor, returned to grab the scope, and went home. We then proceeded to try and power on the scope, hoping that it might just start up. <laughs> But instead, one of the capacitors we were warned about went up in smoke. Oh well, they told us we would have to fix it. There was a lot more interesting stuff that we saw, but didn't film because there was physically not enough time to capture everything and talk to everyone. Overall, it was a very fun weekend, especially since I was able to meet with a bunch of friends. Thanks to everyone who helped put up such a show, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring my trip, and see you next year.